Okay, hello and uh, welcome back again to this uh, 29 lecture of bio microelectromechanical systems. Let us quickly review what we did in the previous lecture. Uh, we talked about some of the steps towards derivation of the first Navier Stokes uh, conservation of momentum equation and uh, basically we discussed how uh, we can represent the acceleration of a particle in a at a point P uh, you know in a velocity v, uh, v defined um, or varying with respect to the position coordinates and time. Uh, we also talked about how angular velocity of a certain particle uh, essentially can be related to the average velocity of both uh, uh, sides of uh, a control volume and we investigated the rotation case and the angular deformation case and found out that they can be represented as the uh, as, as the variation of the y velocity in the x direction and the x velocity in the y direction respectively. And uh, we talked about these uh, uh, different kind of uh, deformations that a control volume a cubic control volume would have uh, including translation, rotation, angular uh, deformation and linear deformation as the control volume moves along the path of fluid in a um, you know medium in a certain medium. So, today let us just uh, go ahead and uh, try to complete uh, what we left unfinished of uh, the conservation of momentum equation. We got uh, the several force uh, components in the x, y and z direction respectively as the equations d f x equals d b d f b x which is the body force in the x direction times the force due to stress in the x direction and we represent this as rho g x plus delta sigma x x by delta x plus delta tau uh, y x by delta y plus delta tau z x by delta z. Uh, similarly, d f y and d f z respectively d f b y plus d f s y which is rho g y plus uh, delta tau x y by del x plus delta sigma y y by del y plus delta sig tau z y by delta z. Similarly, uh, d f z is the body force in the z direction plus the force due to stress in the z direction which is equal to rho g z plus delta tau x z by d x plus delta tau y x by d y plus delta sigma z z by d z times of d x d y d z. Actually the volume element is multiplied everywhere. So, this is also the same into d x d y d z. This is also the same times of d x d y d z respectively. So, uh, from the, uh, the uh, Newton second law uh, if, this, if you consider this control volume that really d f uh, the amount of force that the control volume would actually try to incorporate or face is nothing but uh, m the mass of the control volume or delta m times of dv by dt where v is the velocity of the particle at a point p and it changes to uh, v x plus dx y plus dy z plus dz uh, at time instance t uh, plus delta t respectively. We did this uh, derivation as a matter of fact just before uh, we started considering the stresses in the control volume uh, when, when we talked about acceleration. So, therefore, in this particular case uh, you can represent really uh, this as m d velocity vector with respect to time which is nothing but rho d x d y d z which is the elemental volume roving the density. We assume uh, rho not to vary with t or it is essentially an incompressible case. So, times of u del v by del x plus uh, v del v by del y plus w del v by del z plus del v by del t ok. And uh, if you actually physically resolve the different components d f x, d f y and d f z uh, in this particular uh, expression then you are left with 
dfx vector is essentially rho dx dy dz times of u del u by del x plus v del u by del y plus w del u by del z uh, plus del u by del t and let us call this equation 1. Similarly, del f y total amount of force is rho dx dy dz times of u del v by del x uh, v del v by del y plus w del v by del z plus del v by del t where u v and w are basically components of velocity vector v vector in the x y and z direction and similarly d f uh, z vector is essentially rho d x d y d z times of u del w by del x plus v del w by del y plus w del w by del z plus del w by del t ok. So, that is equation number 3. So, you have these 3 equations as respectively d f x, d f y and d f z and uh, we compare these uh, to the forces obtained earlier. So, comparing uh, 1, 2 and 3 with the forces which we got in the earlier equations ok, uh, which equates the body force and the, the force due to the stress. And, uh, so, basically if you compare this the new set of equations which come out because of that would be essentially rho times g x plus del sigma x x by del x plus del tau y x by del y plus del uh, tau z x by del z uh, times of d x d y d z essentially equal to uh, rho d x d y d z times of u del u by del x plus v del u by del y plus w del u by del z plus del u by del t. Now, this time variation the time component with respect to time is a separate entity altogether as you are seeing here as we made in the first assumption uh, before. So, these elemental volumes kind of cancel each other and we are left with um, straight equations uh, rho g x plus del sigma x x by del x plus del tau y x by del y plus tau del tau z x by del z is equal to rho times of u del u by del x plus v del u by del y plus w del u by del z plus del u by del t ok. So, that is what the x balance uh, would be between the m uh, a x that means the force in the x direction and uh, the uh, the force due to the body force of the uh, the stress uh, in, in the particular control volume in question. Similarly, we will do the same kind of analysis in the y direction and the z directions respectively. So, the two equations that we get as a result of it I am just writing down. So, this let this be equation 4. So, similarly we have uh, equation fifth in the y direction as a comparison between all y forces as rho g y plus del tau x y by del x plus uh, del sigma y y by del y plus del tau z y by del z equals rho times of del v by del t plus u del v by del x plus uh, v del v by del y plus uh, w del v by del z. This is equation 5. Similarly, in the z direction we have uh, an identical result uh, where rho uh, g z plus uh, del tau x z by del x plus del tau y z by del y plus del sigma z z by del z is nothing but rho times of del w by del t plus u del w by del x plus v del w by del y plus w del w by del z respectively. So, this is equation 6. So, if you uh, consider uh, the values of the different shear stresses tau x y tau y x similarly tau z x and tau x z uh, and tau uh, y z and tau z y respectively in terms of its uh, respective variations of uh, uh, the, the velocity components with respect to 
uh, space components as we derived in case of rotation and angular deformation before we will be left with uh, a very simplified and straightforward equation. So, let us say as we have done before tau ix and tau xy causing angular deformation can also be expressed as minus mu let us say d gamma by dt right which is equal to mu times of del v by del x plus del u by del y. And uh, similarly tau yz equal to tau zx zy is same as mu times of del w del w by del y plus del v by del z right. And similarly tau zx equals tau xc and this we did actually in the last uh, class or last lecture how this derivation happens again du by del z plus del w by del x respectively ok. And uh, there are some other approximations that we need to make here uh, which comes from uh, thermodynamic pressure uh, and the relationship between the thermodynamic pressure uh, the, the stress components will be shear or be it uh, principal uh, stress and the velocity. So, all these three uh, linked together and I am not going to actually uh, derive these uh, pressure stress equations separately uh, it is an altogether separate topic, but I am going to assume the approximations uh, which are made in terms of relationships between the different stresses and the pressure uh, etcetera and then try to put this back into the equation in question and try to figure out uh, what the final form of the Navier-Stokes momentum equations conservation of momentum equations would look like ok. So, there are definitely uh, relationships between local thermodynamic parameters like pressure sigma i i this is linear stress and velocity ok at point O around which this control volume has been uh, indicated. If, if you may remember we indicated the control volume by defining a central location O uh, on, on both sides of which the control volume extends dx by 2, dy by 2 and dz by 2 respectively with a plus and minus sign both. So, here the relationships that come uh, based on this argument are sigma xx equal to minus p p is the thermodynamic pressure minus 2 by 3 mu del dot v, v again is uh, nothing but uh, ui plus uh, vj plus wk ok plus twice mu del u by del x ok. Similarly, you have sigma yy equals minus p minus 2 by 3 mu del dot v plus twice mu del v by del y and sigma z z equals minus p minus 2 by 3 mu del dot v plus twice mu uh, give me a minute here twice mu del w by del z. Mind you this mu is essentially the viscosity ok relationship between the shear stress and uh, you know the velocity uh, gradient with respect to uh, the perpendicular direction the direction of flow and the del v of course is essentially uh, nothing but uh, you know again ratio between du by dx plus del uh, v by del y plus del z by uh, del x or, or del w by del z respectively. So, uh, these relationships uh, if we assume them uh, and we do not derive them and then put this back along with the stress uh, vectors that we have seen before the shear stress vectors here in equations uh, let us say 7, 8 and 9 uh, we finally get a form of the Navier-Stokes equations which really is uh, something that uh, you know under the incompressible flow conditions uh, are, are assumed uh, to be true ok. So, uh, by the final form again so I am going to write from here by substitution of these shear stresses and the relationships between uh, the different uh, principal stresses let us call this uh, 
equations uh, 10, 11 and 12 respectively. Okay. So, uh, what was our earlier relation? Our earlier relation was uh, between the m dv by dt and uh, the forces due to the stress components uh, which came into being and here uh, the relationship was really rho times of uh, d by dt of u. So, uh, basically this du by dt here though is, uh, is an operator which we have designed in a very particular and a peculiar manner. Uh, so, as you know here the left side of the equation already was rho times of u del u by del uh, x plus v del u by del y plus w del u by del z plus del u by del t right. So, we take this to be the operator d by dt of u okay, u being this variable here essentially the other format the operator d by dt is nothing but u del by del x plus plus v del by del y plus w del by del z plus del by del t that is essentially what the operator is. So, we have defined this operator in this manner. So, the left side becomes rho du by dt and the right side of this equation as we already know from previous uh, examples becomes uh, uh, rho g x plus del by del x of sigma x x and sigma x x as you already know comes from the pressure equation as minus p minus 2 by 3 mu del dot v plus uh, twice mu del u by del x ok. That is what uh, sigma x x is. So, d by d x of sigma x x plus del by del y of uh, uh, the equation was tau uh, tau x uh, tau y x uh, which can be represented as from the, uh, the angular deformation equation mu times d u by del u by del y plus del v by del x and plus we had d by d z of tau z x which can again be uh, defined from the angular deformation equation as mu times del w by del x plus del u by del z respectively. So, this is uh, equated in general to rho du by dt whereas, I told you this essentially is an operator ok. That is how you represent uh, this equation. So, if you solve uh, this uh, whole equation here on the right hand side uh, and this is of course, the LHS this is the RHS ok of the equation. So, uh, you are left with uh, more particularly for incompressible flow if you assume the density is really constant ok. You are left with a probably more uh, appropriate uh, form uh, of equation uh, which which is more like uh, rho times of the operator d by dt of u is essentially equal to rho g x minus del p by del x ok and plus uh, you are left with mu times of del 2 u by del x uh, 2 plus del 2 u by del y 2 plus del 2 u by del z 2 respectively. So, uh, so this is in the x direction really and this again as you know uh, is nothing but rho times of del u by del t plus u del u by del x plus v del u by del y plus w del u by del z that is what uh, the del operator or the d operator here d by dt really is. So, so in a nutshell uh, the Navier-Stokes equations then in all three dimensions all three directions x, y, z uh, can be written as rho times of del u by del t plus u del u by del x plus v del u by del y plus w del u by del z equals rho g x minus del p by del x plus mu del 2 u by del x square plus del 2 u by del y square plus del 2 u by del z square. That is uh, let us say equation a in the x direction. Similarly, you have rho del v by del t 
plus u del v by del x plus v del v by del y plus w del v by del z equals rho g y minus del p by del y now and plus you have uh, mu times of del 2 v by del x 2 plus del 2 v by del y 2 plus del 2 v by del z 2 and uh, similarly this let us call as b equation in the y direction and in the c in the, in the z direction we call this equation c. So, del w by del t plus u times of del w by del x plus v times of del w by del y plus w times of del w by del z is equal to rho g z minus del p by del z plus mu times of del 2 w by del x square plus del 2 w by del y square plus del 2 w by del z square respectively and this we call as equation c. Okay. So, these are really the three directions of uh, the conservation of uh, momentum equation and Navier-Stokes uh, second equation um, as you can see. I would like to further kind of try to notate uh, the two equations that we have formulated so far in terms of the conservation of mass and the conservation of momentum uh, in terms of i's and j's. So, this is a kind of generic notation which can be used uh, and extended to all the three dimensions, uh, but then essentially the notational representation makes uh, the equation much more look much more compressed and so uh, would essentially do a dimensional analysis on this uh, these equations uh, probably uh, in the next next slide uh, where we'll see that if i can translate the scale uh, in question uh, where these equations are executed to the micron level what is going to happen to both the conservation of mass and conservation of momentum equation so therefore uh, i would like to represent uh, these equations these all three equations by a notation and for before that let us actually write the conservation of mass again. So, conservation of mass as you know here is del u by del y x plus del uh, v by del y plus del uh, w by del z equal to 0 uh, for an incompressible flow essentially and uh, therefore, this I can notate uh, in a little more appropriate manner as del u i by del x i equals 0. We assume that i's essentially are all the, the i's essentially are all the, uh, so therefore, uh, as you see here notationally uh, the i represents or i varies between 1, 2, 3 would represent uh, u, v and w right and x, y and z. So, this is a very straightforward equation that del u i by del x i that means del u by del x, del v by del y, del w by del z summation is equal to 0. Okay. So, this is a notational representation of the conservation of mass uh, equation. It is the first uh, Navier-Stokes equation. All right. The other uh, equation that we derived just about uh, last slide can be notated as del or let us actually do it here and then translate back the information. So, what is this equation really if you see here there is a u component in all these operators. Uh, in uh, equation A. Similarly, there is a V component in all these operators in equation uh, B and similarly a W component in C. Okay. And what is interesting also is that the x, y, z are varying in each of these equations. All right. So, if I notate all these u's, v's and w's as i, that means i varies in the, uh, the direction of the rows okay. and j varies in the direction of the columns. Okay as if j is varying in the direction of the columns. So, I can notate this equation in a more appropriate manner as rho times of del u i by del t okay, plus uh, u j. Now, as you see here u v w are varying in the j direction. So, j varying between 1, 2 and 3 meaning uh, these u, this v and this w is actually corresponding to the j. So, u j times of delta u i by delta x j. Okay. So, uh, essentially again as you see the j is varying wherever there is a variation in the columnar direction it is j 
wherever there is a variation in the row wise manner it is i that is how you are subscripting both the variables. So, that is equal to rho times of f i again i varies in the columnar direction this is uh, g x this is uh, g uh, y this is g z all these in the columnar uh, in the row time in the, in the row, row direction. So, f i minus del p and uh, let me just uh, quickly delete this right here let us mark c here ok. So, this is c. So, this is del p over del x i again as you see here in case of p the subscript here varies in a row wise direction in row wise manner. So, that is i plus neta and uh, essentially here you have uh, plus neta times of del 2 and you have a variation of u here as you see u uh, then v then w is in the row wise direction. So, this is corresponding to i. So, del 2 u i and uh, you have uh, in the denominator here del x j 2 because x y z as you are seeing here is varying more in the columnar direction. So, that is what the representational the notational representation of this uh, particular uh, three directional momentum equation uh, of Navier Stokes is really like. So, uh, we can write as rho del u i by del t plus u j del u j by del x j ok equals rho f i f i is actually a representation of the body force or g minus del pressure p by del x i plus eta the viscosity del 2 u i by del x j 2 that is how you represent the conservation of momentum equation. Now, um, there is also a third equation for conservation of energy. But essentially uh, you know it contains uh, a temperature term that is the only difference that this particular equation has. And so therefore, uh, as in this particular scale we consider in the microscopic particularly uh, surface domain we our flows are mostly dominated by the uh, by the prominence of the surface over the volume right. And uh, uh, there are effectively no uh, not much change in the viscosity and the density we still assume continuum based properties at this particular uh, scale the micron scale at least. And so, therefore, there are no variations in these properties with temperature ok. So, therefore, really uh, the energy equation is not needed as far as the micro scale flows are concerned. What I would be more worried about at this stage is that uh, how we can scale down uh, uh, the momentum equation. So, in, in the scaling uh, equation we had to assume uh, the following presumptions ok. Now, number one is that all flows are low Reynolds number flows. Okay. Uh, so, why we, uh, we actually uh, try to take a low Reynolds number flow is that a great many micro fluidic devices operate uh, in regimes where the flow moves uh, slowly that is number one and number two uh, in small dimensions ok that is number two. Say for instance, you are talking about a very thin piece of uh, channel or a very thin size of uh, the micro channel which is defined by uh, photolithography. So, there the channel thickness is defined by the film thickness and the film thickness could be anywhere between let us say 20 microns all the way to about, uh, about uh, 100 microns or so. Now, 100 microns is effectively the diameter of a human hair ok. So, you can consider that what is the 
what is the effective volume through which this, this flow would actually flow. And it is very obvious to assume that uh, the flow rates typically would be a few microliters per minute. That means the volume discharge through this thin sample is really, really low. And so, uh, the, you are packing the molecules in a smaller volume and plus secondly moving them in a very, very uh, slow manner uh, which is constrained by the geometry. And uh, therefore, most of the cases the flows are typically laminar in nature and uh, low Reynolds number is an obvious uh, conclusion out of all this because Reynolds number is nothing but rho v d by mu where velocity v or this dimension d, length dimension d whichever is smaller makes the overall Reynolds number very small. So, effectively we really need to determine whether the flow happens slowly relative to the length scale. Uh, that we are considering right. And so therefore, we really need to scale down the original dimensional variables in the earlier two equations okay the conservation of mass and uh, conservation of momentum okay so, one of the reasons why dimensionalization, non-dimensionalization is preferred at these uh, uh, and many other applications is because scaling down will ensure that you do not have any absolute uh, physical parameters like density, um, viscosity, uh, then uh, length scale, time scale, etcetera. So, what you instead have is a ratio and the ratio is uh, comparative to uh, a certain feature size or a certain uh, parameter size which is generally prevalent at the scale at which you are non dimensionalizing the particular equation. So, this is a, is a method which is used uh, be it Lenard Jones potential, be it uh, microfluidics, be it MD simulations uh, just to ascertain that you are essentially uh, using dimensional variable non dimensional variables at the scale that your experiments are all uh, supposed to be. So, the equation would be a good estimate of that particular scale when instead of a dimensional form you use it in a non dimensionalized DA compare way compared to or comp in, in comparison to parameters at the particular scale of the experiment. So, therefore, uh, in this particular case also uh, how do we do that? We uh, first of all find out what are the variables which are effectively there in all the Navier-Stokes equations. So, you have uh, velocity u as one variable, uh, space coordinate x, y, z whatever you call. Uh, so, this is the length variable, so there is a time variable and then there is a pressure variable p uh, and, and so therefore, we need to ascertain some characteristic values of these parameters. at the micron scale okay, for non dimensionalization. So, essentially let us consider a geometry. Okay, so, the, we now consider a geometry whose uh, characteristic length is uh, let us suppose d and uh, whose characteristic velocity is u. Okay. So, we represent uh, everything in terms of d and u time scale automatically follows suit and as we will see the density and the, the pressure etcetera will also uh, be represented in terms of uh, all these quantities. Okay. So, essentially uh, that is what uh, uh, you know we will be uh, uh, trying to scale down and, and we make these non dimensional numbers and call them with a or notate them with a subscript star like. Uh, um, x i star u i star 
uh, so on and so forth. So, basically uh, now if you look at uh, let us say uh, the scaling. So, we consider a geometry whose uh, characteristic size is represented. Just give me a minute here. Is represented by on the quantity xi. Okay. Sorry, the quantity d. So it is represented by the quantity d. Similarly, uh, the average velocity is represented by u here. Okay. So, average velocity at that scale is represented by u. Okay. Uh, so, therefore, uh, this number x i star which is actually a dimensional non dimensional number is uh, exactly equal to x i by d and uh, similarly u i star the non dimensional velocity number is equal to u i by u. Okay. So, therefore, uh, that is how you represent uh, uh, these uh, dimensionless numbers and the idea is to convert the Navier-Stokes equations both uh, uh, the mass as well as uh, the momentum conservation equations into these quantities with subscript stars. So, that the equation is kind of a scale down model uh, into the micro scale for applications. So, now uh, uh, from these two equations we can further derive that x i definitely can be represented as d times of x i star and similarly u i can be represented as u times of u i star. Okay. So, assuming an isothermal flow of Newtonian uh, isotropic uh, fluid the conservation of mass uh, is essentially uh, very very simplified as d u i by d x i equal to 0. Right. So, we assume uh, an isothermal flow isothermal being incompressible because there is no variation in density with temperature etcetera. Uh, all the flow is at a constant temperature. Uh, so, this is of a Newtonian fluid which means again that you know uh, the shear stress is proportional to the, uh, the rate of change of velocity with respect to the cross direction. Okay. So, du by dy proportional to uh, tau essentially. So, of a Newtonian fluid and uh, essentially uh, which is also isotropic in nature. Okay. So, isotropic in nature means there is no non homogeneity or inconsistency problem dimensions uh, in, in within with the density or viscosity they are all homogeneous they are all uniform across uh, the whole medium. So, we assume these three conditions. Uh, so, the conservation of mass equation then can be really represented as you saw earlier as d u i by d x i equal to 0. Okay. Uh, so, we try to now represent uh, or, or put these different quantities here which have been formulated here in let us say the set of equations 1. So, we are left with u del u i star uh, by d del x i star equal to 0. In other words del u i star by del x i star equal to 0. These two being characteristic uh, numbers uh, representing velocity and dimensions uh, they kind of um, remain constant and so they can be taken outside the differential here. And so therefore, uh, del u i star by del x i star is 0. So, this is the scale down equation. Okay. Scale down equation. So, the formulation of the scale down equation in case of conservation of mass is really not very uh, very critical. Uh, it does not go unchanged, it is just a ratio of the u i star number with respect to uh, the d x i star number again. Uh, however, the changes would occur when you uh, look at uh, the Navier Stokes second uh, conservation of momentum equations and significant changes would occur which can be interpreted uh, and some of the properties essential properties at the micro scale of flows would really come out uh, if, you, if you scale down the second equation from Navier Stokes. 
So let us do that. So we assume an isothermal flow of isotropic fluid. So the conservation of uh, so we have a so we assume an isothermal. flow of homogeneous uh, fluid an isotropic uh, fluid okay uh, so the conservation of momentum equation as we saw earlier can be represented in terms of uh, um, if you just uh, go ahead and uh, look into the equation, the momentum equation that we derived before, it was rho del u i by del t right plus u uh, i uh, or u j rather del u i by del x j equals rho f i minus del p by del x i plus eta del 2 u i by del x j 2 ok. That is what conservation of momentum equation was really in terms of the notational form. Now, if we want to uh, go ahead and substitute uh, uh, the different values of uh, uh, the non dimensional numbers here, uh, we have uh, again two numbers as uh, you may just recall uh, last slide we did this. So, x i is d x i star ok and all velocities whether it is u i or u j essentially u u i star similarly u j uh, we, we are just talking about a scale. So, essentially this is a, uh, a represented representative quantity u is a representative velocity at the particular scale of interest. So, whether it is a uh, you know uh, subscript j or i whether it is a change in the columnar fashion or the row fashion uh, the corresponding dimensioned number or dimensional non dimensional number. Uh, will uh, really not change because of that and therefore, the relationship for j also holds valid. You have this u j as u, u j star ok, where u j star is the dimensional number in the uh, or, or the variation as j varies in the columnar manner j is equal to 1, 2, 3. We already talked in details about this notation, notation if you may recall uh, when we were trying to notate the whole uh, set of the conservation of uh, uh, momentum equations in Navier Stokes. Uh, uh, derivation ok. So, uh, just substituting this back into uh, the equation here let us say this equation was uh, equation number 2 uh, we are left with uh, a condition where rho times of u del u i star ok by del t we have not yet characterized or we have not yet changed the time dimension ok that we will be doing in the next step. So, plus uh, we, uh, we call it u square by d and uh, this should be equal to uh, really um, uj star times of del ui star by del xj star ok. That is how uh, the LHS can be written and it is equal to rho f i again minus del pressure p by del x i star into d ok. That is how you characterize this plus eta and uh, you call this uh, u divided by square of d as this notation represents here it is del x j square. So, it is uh, d square times of x j star square with a del ok. So, you have del 2 u i star here and you have del x j star square here and uh, what comes out of the equation is eta u by uh, d square. So, uh, this kind of clear uh, at the stage what uh, this is about right and uh, let us just do a little bit of uh, algebraic uh, manipulation here. We multiply uh, this, this equation by d square by eta u on both sides ok. So, we are left with now rho d square u by eta u ok del u i star by d t del t plus rho u d by eta u j star times of del u i star by u uh, del x j star ok. And here uh, we have del uh, oh sorry rho d square by eta u f i minus this is f i 
uh, minus um, del by eta u del p by del x j star plus del 2 u i star by del x j star square. Okay? So, that is how uh, you could write the, the non dimensional form of this uh, equation. Although this is not a complete non dimensional form again, there are certain quantities here I would like to illustrate like um, T here, the pressure P here or the force F here which is still in the old domain and you have uh, uh, values here, absolute values of these forces and somehow we have to develop a mechanism out of whatever parameters we have now to uh, find out if we can really uh, scale down these numbers okay, or, or scale down these particular parameters by comparing it to a parameter uh, of same type at that particular scale. Okay. So, let us actually go ahead and transform. So, we will say that this transformation is incomplete because uh, some of the variables like let us say temperature, pressure etcetera are still not scaled down all right. And so, for that or for doing that we would go ahead and actually try to see how we can represent uh, these uh, variables. Okay. Now, for all practical purposes uh, the only quantity which may differ a little bit is F i force uh, which is related to the body force. Now, when we are talking about micro scale flows, uh, uh, the mass of uh, the, the, the volumes which flow really are very, very negligible. So, therefore, uh, the whole business about F i uh, the body force okay, uh, is also negligibly small, we can neglect it to 0. Uh, and so, we need really quantities like T and P to be scaled down in order to ascertain whether we can uh, complete uh, the scaling down of the Navier-Stokes equation at the particular scale of reference. So, let us actually figure out what this scale would be. So, T star uh, would definitely be equal to the time in this particular scale T divided by time equivalent in, in the scale that we are considering and we already have the corresponding scaled uh, or scaling parameters for the micro scale of d and u uh, for the length and the velocity respectively. So, d by u definitely would give an idea of what kind of time scales would uh, be appropriate for the scale in question or for the, for the micro scale at which this uh, equation is being scaled down. And so, therefore, we can represent t star a quantity which is equal to t by uh, d by u. And similarly, uh, for the pressure uh, P star can be uh, the ratio between P and as we know eta does not vary because eta is actually a scale independent property. It is a viscosity of the fluid and it is same across all scales whether it is micro, nano uh, till, till it goes I am sorry till it goes to a level where continuum is uh, destabilized. Okay. So, but we are talking about the micro scale where we still the continuum holds true and so neta essentially the viscosity or mu whatever you call. Uh, remains uh, kind of fixed uh, across all these different scales wherever uh, the continuum is still maintained or established. Okay. So, n, so, therefore, this pressure unit as you know is same as that of uh, shear stress and shear stress is nothing but uh, eta u by d. Okay. The rate of uh, change of uh, velocity with respect to uh, the separation distance in the perpendicular direction. Okay. So, therefore, when we are talking about just scaled parameters, it is good to assume u by d times of eta to be the corresponding shear stress uh, which is uh, required for separating uh, such flows or layers of such flows and therefore, this can be considered equivalent uh, to uh, the kind of pressure scale. Okay. So, p star again becomes p by eta u by d. Now, if I put all these uh, derivations back into uh, our equation here which we formulated just about a minute back. Uh, we will be left with uh, the, something like you know rho u d by eta uh, times of del u i star by del t star plus u j star times of del u i star by del x j star minus uh, you can call it uh, 
not minus you can finish the bracket here equals minus uh, of del p star by del x i star plus uh, del 2 u i star uh, by del x j star okay del x j star square. Uh, let me just uh, uh, write this in, in a little more clearer manner. So, this is uh, del p star minus del p star by del x i star uh, plus really uh, del 2 u i star divided by del x j star square. Okay? So, that is what uh, essentially uh, the, the relationship would be in a totally totally scaled down manner. Now, you have t star here note uh, which is the kind of uh, non dimensional analog of time t and you have p star here which is the non dimensional analog of uh, p star and essentially the f i here the body forces which was the term uh, more towards the right hand side here is neglected because we consider in micro scale flows the volumes or the masses involved to be too low for the gravity effects to be significantly affecting the flow. So, therefore, f i for all practical purposes in micro scale is 0. But something very interesting has happened in this equation. Let us call it equation 4. Okay. So, what is interesting here is that this term is nothing but the Reynolds number the rho u d by n and this is uh, the kind of characteristic Reynolds number at the scale that you are considering. right? Because u d uh, rho and eta rho and eta of course, do not change uh, across the scales till the continuum is established and u and d are the scaled velocities and uh, uh, the length dimensions at the scale that you are questioning or, or concerned. So, therefore, uh, it can be very appropriate to assume that the Reynolds number at the particular scale I call it R E S C times of del u i star uh, by del t star. Okay. All these different uh, components of the equation on the left side del u i star by del x j star is equal to minus del p star by del x i star plus del 2 u i star by del x j star square. Okay? Now, as we know that the Reynolds number at the scales that we are looking at is really, really small. It is uh, very, very less than I mean almost always less than 100 and very often less than 0 0.1. Okay? Reynolds number is very low and so therefore, the contribution coming from the LHS of this equation is uh, kind of uh, overshadowed by the smallness of uh, the Reynolds number itself and therefore, the LHS vanishes away. You can say that this is very, very negligibly small and it is 0 and therefore, the Navier-Stokes equations finally turn around into uh, minus del p star by del x i star plus del 2 u i star by del x j star square is equal to 0. Okay? So, this is a very important goal that we have established here that if you scale down the conservation of momentum equation at uh, the scale of the Reynolds uh, number being very small or micro scale, you immediately find out that th the equation becomes time independent. Okay? Time independent and therefore, there are certain effects and uh, uh, situations in the micro scale which become very, very prominent where time no longer matters. You know, I mean things like mixing. Uh, etc. You know, if if you just consider uh, mixing by, uh, by by the means of just uh, um, you know mass transport, uh, that mixing actually uh, becomes uh, uh, insignificant. Okay, uh, at the micro scale, uh, just because you know if you have two flows which you are timing in together onto a chip and they go side by side for a little bit. Uh, and if you want to reverse them back in time, they should be, you should be able to extract the flows as it is uh, back unmixed. So, therefore, uh, th this is a very, very important uh, conclusion out of scaling down the Reynolds number. So, we are uh, towards the end of this particular lecture. Uh, I would like to uh, kind of take on from here uh, in the next lecture and try to show you some of the uh, some of the observations and, and conclusions that we can have from this scaling approach, uh, which essentially starts the domain of microfluidics and then probably go over some of these fluidic devices like mixers, valves, pumps, etcetera, in little more details and try to see how they can be applied to biomems platforms. Thank you.